What is up, what is up, what is up? Welcome to The Mitch Davis Show. I'm your host, Mitch Davis, founder of the Mitch Davis Show.com, podcast host of the Mitch Davis Show, co-host of the Hit It to Hoover SEC Baseball Podcast. You can follow me on Twitter, Mitch Davis underscore eight. On the podcast today, on Wednesday, July 20th, I'm going to be joined by a very special guest, historian for the College Football Hall of Fame, Mr. Kent Stevens will be joining me momentarily to talk about the College Football Hall of Fame, to talk about all the exciting things, including SEC Media Days and all the brand new exhibits they have going on down there at the College Football Hall of Fame in Atlanta. Uh, Kent Stevens has been doing this uh, for well over 20 years. He was a uh, graduate of Ohio State, went to Cincinnati, diehard college football fan, uh, has had experience at the College Football Hall of Fame there in South Bend and also in Ohio. Uh, great guy. Really fun interview uh, that I know every college football fan that listens to the Mitch Davis show will enjoy and really learn something from because there's a lot of history uh, in, in the great sport that we all know and love so dearly uh, in the game of college football. Uh, before we jump into that, make sure you head on over to Wall Wall Coverage of the SEC Media Days uh, over on TheMitchDavisShow.com. Got all the coaches' interviews up. Got an article written about Craig Sankey. Uh, got an article uh, up about Mike Leach. Going to be doing one tomorrow on Kirby Smart and Mark Stoops and also possibly Shane Beamer as well. But at this time, I would like to welcome my very special guest, Kent Stevens, to the Mitch Davis Show podcast. And before that, head on over to Twitter, Mitch Davis underscore eight. Give us a follow as well. Thank you so much for tuning in and enjoy this interview with Mr. Kent Stevens of the College Football Hall of Fame. I am joined now by a man who is a historian for the College Football Hall of Fame, a guy that's been doing this for over 20 years, an Ohio State graduate, a uh, Cincinnati fan. Uh, we were just talking on the uh, on, on preview before we got on the recording, and he was telling me he was a Bearcat fan. Um, Mr. Kent Stevens, welcome to the Mitch Davis Show podcast. How are you doing? I'm doing great today, Mitch. How are you? So let's talk about all the great things at the College Football Hall of Fame. I was told that you guys have a brand new SEC exhibit. Talk about that and what you guys added to that. Okay. Well, we have a, a large changing exhibit room. And about oh, three or four times a year, we go and we put a new exhibit in there. Uh, that allows us to bring a lot of the artifacts we have stashed away in our archive you know i would guess that at any particular time maybe two percent probably not even that of, of what we have actually is on display and it's probably less than that i, I have it i'd have to crunch the number so um we've done very all sorts of different topics down through the years um and this exhibit since we have sec media day we thought we'd bring being out of some of the our, uh, artifacts from the all the sec team so each sec team has a locker that exp uh, it brings out artifacts um, from that school. And obviously, recently, we've had a lot of uh, Heisman Trophy winners uh, from the SEC, the Alabama people, Henry and uh, Smith and those people, and Burrow from LSU. So we have all their jerseys and other artifacts. And we also have a few little fun uh, little oddball trinkets. Um, at a few, when I think when they just joined the conference, South Carolina had a quarterback named Steve Tannehill. And he had this crazy mullet that it was <laughs> hung out underneath his helmet. And so they, they sold these South Carolina hats with hair coming out the back, you know. And so, oh, we bring that out. Or the uh, Mississippi State cowbell or the uh, cadet uniform from Texas A&M going along with the other artifacts. Or an 18-mile-an-hour sign from Mississippi that go along with uh, the regular jerseys, helmets, footballs, you know, autographed footballs that you would find normally. And um and we have some text explaining uh, how the conference evolved. You know how they, the 13 original teams left the Southern Conference in 1933. So this will be the 89th season for the SEC. And so we explain all that, and we also look to the future. So we also have a little bit of on um, Oklahoma and Texas as well. I ask you about the College Football Hall of Fame. Obviously, I've never been uh, just yet. I'm, I'm planning on hopefully getting to go. Uh, this August and coming down for a couple of days to Atlanta to see a Braves game and then go to the College Football Hall of Fame. What makes the College Football Hall of Fame so special? Well, I, 
you know, this is the, <laughs> I've been with the Hall of Fame since uh, 1990. It was a uh, world's oldest intern from Ohio State at the time. And so we've been at three different places. We were initially in uh, north, north of Cincinnati in Kings Island, Ohio. And that museum closed in uh, 92. And then we moved to South Bend, Indiana in 95. And that closed in, in a 12. And then we uh, relocated here in, in 14. And all three museums were a little bit different. Um, the second museum in South Bend was really highly history driven. Uh, if you're really into the history of college football, that was an excellent exhibit. But we found out that you have a lot, like, a lot of casual fans who really aren't interested in what happened in 1932. And they're more interested in the bands and the cheerleaders and the mascots and the fight songs and things like that. So it's very interactive, very high tech. I mean, you can still do the history parts, but it also incorporates all the other maybe like call it social aspects of college football. My wife hates college football. She just hates all football. And when I put her here, she, we were here for two and a half hours and I felt like I was dragging her through the exhibit. Come on, I want to go, hey, come hungry. I haven't had dinner, Let, let's go. She goes, no, no, I want to see this, I want to see that. So uh, it's something for the whole family that I think can get something out of it in addition to nuts like me who are really into the history side as well. Have you seen like a, a new age of college football fans come through the Hall of Fame? Obviously, you've got guys like myself who I'm 25 years old, about to be 26. I love the history. I love the history of the game. I'm going through the eight part series of the history of the SEC, although I've already watched it once. It's a tradition now to watch it before the season. Have you seen a new age of college football fans come through the Hall of Fame uh, here recently? Uh, no, really not that I can. I, I, I worry at times that people um, have an attitude that I call generational narcissism, which sort of means like they can't relate to anything that they haven't personally experienced, and they sort of discount anything that happened long before they were alive. Uh, I, I worry about that. So there are so, um, and I think that's part of the you know the instant gratification of where we are in society today that. I, I do worry that, that there is less interest in history, but I really can't say that I've actually physically noticed that, no. It's just a worry I have. i tell you what's a really cool thing, and I'll get to the next question, is you know I'm going to have the opportunity and the honor to interview Vince Dooley, one of the mm -hmm. legendary Georgia Bulldogs and legendary SEC coaches. And You know, it's funny, when I announced the podcast interview, I could tell there was an older generation who was very excited, and the younger generation is, Oh, why are you not interviewing Kirby Smart? Or oh, why are you not, you know, interviewing some of the younger guys? And you know, I think, I, I think to your point, I think it's important for young guys like myself to be that representative and kind of bridge that gap. You know, and that's one of the things why I started the podcast is because I am a fan of college athletics, whether it be college basketball, college baseball, college football. To me, you've got to respect the past and and, and love the future. You know, and that's something that I take a lot of pride in. Well, I think to, to, the reason I think it's history is important. It's a sense of gratitude. I mean, the people who came before you, you know, the reason you are where you are today, while we we're able to do a podcast, is because somebody actually took the time to figure out all this technology or somebody else did something previously to. So where we are today is based on the efforts and took blood, sweat, and tears of someone before us. And I think you need to honor those people. Give Let me that. ask you about a college football question. Obviously, you were telling me you were a Cincinnati man yourself. What has been your favorite memory so far of the Cincinnati Bearcats in your lifetime? Well, uh, well <laughs> I think the biggest one was, you know, I, I could, let me tell you a little, a little story. So I graduated from the University of Cincinnati in 1976. And you know, if you know about the Cincinnati campus and the Nipper Stadium, it's all totally, really congested. There's hardly any room for any movement. And so I left the Tangeman University Center, which is the um, student union at the time. They just graduated, and, I, and right behind it is Nippert Stadium, a short little, a little road. And I'm walking down the road, and there's a big hill. And at that time, there was a fence or a brick wall around the stadium. And I was walking down the hill, and I looked into the stadium. I thought, wouldn't it be cool if one day UC was in a bowl game? <laughs> just get to a bowl game. Yeah. And, you know, so obviously the things have changed greatly. And um, another 
big moment was when we hit our first under and then we hit we hit UFC had never been in the top 20 finished in the top 20 ever until Brian Kelly got there in, in 2007 and they in his first year they made it top 25 but in 2009 we had an undefeated season and we had that great game against Pittsburgh that won the Big East title and we in a last second touchdown pass from Tony Pike to Armand Bins and I remember sitting at home watching that game, and they were down something terrible in the first half. And I got so disgusted, I left and went home, went downtown to the library. And I came home, and my wife says, why aren't you watching the game? They're only down by X number of points. I'm like, how did that, how did that happen? And so I watched the second half, and it was very exciting to see them finish undefeated. Let me ask you, how cool has it been to see some of these great memories? Obviously, I told you I'm – my dad's side's all Kentucky. My mom's side's all Memphis fans. So I grew up around not so great college football, but we loved our Wildcats. We loved the Tigers. You know, memories of Tim Cal, Jared Lorenzen, D'Angelo Williams, Danny Wimpron, and now, of course, the Cotton Bowls and the Citrus Bowls that both respectively Memphis and Kentucky have made it to. What has been those cool artifacts that you've seen come through the Hall of Fame that you've enjoyed being around, putting your hands on, and learning about? Well, I'll, I'll, before I get to that, I'll, I will tell you that, that when Angela Williams was playing, Memphis came out with some sort of little car. Yes. That was that was a Heisman, you know, type thing. So we had one of those in our archive. So we've got a little Angela Williams car. <laughs> uh, but my favorite artifact, the one that I, I revere the most, is Chick Harley's helmet. Now, obviously, before UC was good in football, obviously I was still an Ohio State fan, and I went to grad school at Ohio State. Um, if it wasn't for Chick Harley, Ohio State may not be the big power that they are today. They were that was their first big football star, and he he can, could have, if there was a Heisman Trophy back then, probably would have won two and possibly even three Heisman trophies back in his day. And it's really neat to see this old leather helmet and then to see a picture of Chick Harley. And the leather helmet's got some kind of a crease in it, and then you see the photograph of Chick Harley wearing this helmet with the same crease in it, so you know it's the same helmet. And just as the uh, a guy wrote a great book about Chick Harley, and he was saying that if it wasn't for Chick Harley, Ohio State fans would be just like Indiana or Illinois fans that on Saturday afternoons, instead of worrying about their football team, would be raking leaves or washing their cars. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's for, so for me, that's one of my biggest art, uh, artifacts. The other one, one I, I, I enjoy is this year is the 40th anniversary of the Cal Stanford band play, where Gary Tyrell, this, the Stanford uh, trombone player, gets knocked down in the end zone by Kevin Moen from California. Um, we had an exhibit in South Bend on different rivalries, and so I called. This is, must have been before freedom of information or privacy issues. So I called the Stanford alumni office and said, can you give me Gary Tyrell's address and telephone number? So they did. And so I called him and I told him why what I was calling for and, his, and I wanted his trombone that he got was, was carrying when he got knocked down in the end zone. And he said, well, if this is a scam, it's the best one that's ever been pulled on me because when he was a student at Stanford, some Cal students broke into his dorm room and stole his trombone. They stole the wrong trombone. They stole his concert trombone, not his marching band trombone. So that's how we got his uh, trombone. So that's another one of my favorite artifacts. You know, last question I have for you, I want to ask you what the game of college football means to you. I, obviously, you know, you, you're a little different background than I am. I'm from the SEC country. You're more from the Big Ten, the Midwest. But what does college football mean to you in particular? And how cool is it to be able to work with the College Football Hall of Fame and tell those stories of every every generation of college football well that's what i like to do best is, is, is tell the stories and all the eyeball things that um people don't know of you know and i like doing all the weird little research and i think a, a month or so ago it was you know we do social media stuff and, and the social media guy says well it's um barefoot day or barefoot week or barefoot month or could you tell you but never played college football barefoot so you know i did a research on the barefoot kickers and what have you and so i really enjoy that but um i guess what it means to me you know i can remember the very first game i went to with my father in 1963 and college football was really one of the last sports i got in, in, interested in as, as a kid and it was of course baseball and with the reds and 
Bearcats won national championships in 61 and 62, so, so I was really heavily into basketball. But um, I didn't have a college football connection until the 63 season. And the reason that that season became important to me was my aunt married a Naval Academy graduate who uh, was from here in Atlanta, by the way. And uh, in 1963, Navy had the number two team in the country. And they had this really exciting quarterback by the name of Roger Staubach, who was from Cincinnati. And so that all kind of connected together. And from that, I became a big college football fan. He is Ken Stevens, historian of the College Football Hall of Fame. Thank you so much for coming on the Mitch Davis Show podcast. Mitch, I enjoyed it. Anytime. You have been listening to the Mitch Davis Show podcast. Very special thank you to our special guest today, historian of the College Football Hall of Fame, Ken Stevens, for coming on the podcast on the Mitch Davis Show uh, to talk about all things College Football Hall of Fame, including all the great exhibits and the SEC media days. A really, a really great time uh, is happening down there at the College Football Hall of Fame. If you haven't yet, like myself, go on down there and enjoy I know that they would love to have you. It, it just—it it really is so cool to learn about all the great things that are happening at the College Football Hall of Fame. So a very special thank you to Kent Stevens for coming on the Mitch Davis Show podcast. It's an honor uh, to have him on and talk college football uh, with a guy who knows it, knows it best. I mean, who was around all the artifacts, who was around all the great things at the College Football Hall of Fame. So it was an honor to talk to Kent and really enjoy and really learn about the College Football Hall of Fame. I'm your host, Mitch Davis. You can follow me on Twitter, Mitch Davis underscore eight. Check out the website, themitchdavisshow.com. Got a lot of great SEC media uh, days content, including articles about Greg Sankey, uh, Mike Leach. Man, we got all the coaches, press conference, everything you could ever dream of there at themitchdavisshow.com. Got well over 10 articles and 10 different press conferences already uploaded. Looking forward to the rest of the week there in Atlanta. Uh, and be sure you head on over to Twitter. Follow me, Mitch Davis underscore eight, Instagram at the Mitch Davis Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Enjoy the SEC Media Days, and I will catch you next week with a couple of new uh, podcast interviews from out on the West Coast. Uh, Emily Van Busker will be joining me next week to talk about the Pac-12, talk about expansion, talk about realignment, and talk about what's next for the Pac-12 conference out there. Thank you again for tuning in to the Mitch Davis Show.